Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Rogers for Business presentation of LinkedIn Live. And our topic today is how to connect with your customers in a virtual world. My name is Dennis Stevens. I'm the Senior Vice President of Marketing for Rogers for Business. And I'd like to introduce and welcome Bruce Parker from Deloitte. Good afternoon, Bruce. Hi, Dennis. Great to be with you. Great to have you here. So for our audience, Bruce Parker is the Chief Sales Officer leading Deloitte's National Sales Office. Prior to this role, he was the executive leader of the Office of Sales and Marketing Leadership for Deloitte's consulting function in Canada. His passion for delivering high value results to clients was a driver for developing the vision and structure around this office. Over the last 25 years at Deloitte, he's had many roles from industry leadership to technology leadership to geographical leadership. These experiences across the major dimensions of Deloitte has allowed Bruce to understand how to share the power of the firm with valued clients and people. Bruce coaches many of the firm's most complex sales pursuits and has an impressive winning record. He is also recognized globally as a sales leader and is often sought out to contribute to key sales initiatives, uh, including here at Rogers. He is focused on advancing sales culture and helping the people of the firm develop delightful client experiences. So let's discuss some recent trends with Bruce. And uh, the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna ask some questions to you, the audience, and you can respond in the chat and, and share there. And then we'll turn to Bruce and we'll ask him uh, his perspective as an expert on these topics. So let's start with the first question. How are you communicating with your customers pre-COVID and how has it changed? So you can respond to uh, folks in the chat section and and um, I'll turn to Bruce. Bruce, what trends have you seen pre and post COVID with regards to how businesses were communicating and transacting with their customers? Uh, thanks, Dennis. And, and thank you very much for that uh, very nice introduction. I really appreciate that. Um, we, we've seen the biggest trend that we've seen is, it, is that of acceleration of what I would call digital transformations. And it covers a lot of different areas, everything from supply chain and visibility to information, to the way that people work, to the rethinking about what's gonna happen once we get out of the, uh, the, the crisis in terms of, of working, distance learning, online entertainment, all of these things have really shifted and are causing us to rethink things like how we actually communicate with our customers and clients. And do we have the right things in place to industrialize those communications? So online payments, the uh, increase in bandwidth with the use of 5G, that is gonna become very, very important to a lot of our clients. So, so the, the trend really is uh, continuation of what happened, what was happening before the crisis. And now we're seeing some acceleration. So things that took, used to take months and years are now taking weeks. And people need to think through how that is actually going to uh, affect their businesses. How have businesses like Deloitte adapted to the impact on customer and service delivery models? What new service delivery models are emerging? And can you share any examples with us? Yeah, it's been um, it's been very interesting. We, of course, being a a, a big advisory firm, um, you know, we have two parts to our firm: advisory and a test our, our audit clients. And in both parts of those businesses, we've seen major shifts in the way we deliver work. So most of our work now is being done uh, remotely. The, the seminars that we do for our clients is all virtual. We've virtualized much of our learning. So, so a lot of it has changed and a lot of it has stayed the same because we were kind of in that mode already. We, we were mobile, we were doing things remotely with our clients, we had very big alternate delivery mechanisms in our firm to connect parts of the world that could add value to a client's problem. So from that perspective, it hasn't changed that much. What has changed is on the other side of the table with our clients, now they're trying to figure out how to work remotely and get everybody connected and work in, in a different world. That has become a little bit of a challenge for much of our work. 
Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about challenges. So uh, change can be opportunity, but it can also introduce challenges. Um, you know, touching on how businesses had to suddenly adopt e-commerce platforms for transacting with their customers, uh, what are some of the challenges they've been facing and, and could continue to face even yeah. after the vaccine? Yeah, I, I, and, and I think um, some of these changes are permanent for us. And I, some, of them, some of them I'm glad they will be permanent because we'll start to pay attention more to the use of data and insights about the data as we get better at understanding how to use technology to uh, supercharge our supply chains. We're going to rethink the way people do work. We're going to rethink the work, and we're going to rethink um, the people who are doing the work. So, so I, I think that is really going to help us. The challenges come in organizations saying, do we have the wherewithal and the skills to now use the new techniques that we're thinking through? Are we overthinking something? Do we know what the opportunities are? And what are our competitors doing uh, in the market that may be out of desperation or um, some really unique uh, strategies to take advantage of the opportunities that are in the market? So I think the, the challenges cover a whole range of things. And what we've been looking at uh, at Deloitte, we actually developed a, um, a workbook for small and medium businesses and it's a workbook. It's called the Small and Medium Business Roadmap for Recovery and Beyond. And it's available on uh, uh, Deloitte.com. I want to show a little framework that comes from that workbook because the, the workbook is focused on responding to the crisis, recovering and thriving. And the meat of the workbook is around um, recovery. And it, it actually takes us through uh, three big things that clients should be thinking about. Reflection, restarting, and revitalizing. And uh, the, the, this framework basically takes <laughs> The, uh, I think we're having some difficulty getting your uh, framework displayed here. So uh, I tell you, I just keep it, explaining I it. it. I, I Eventually, see we'll it. see the graphic. <laughs> I and see we'll it behind us. In the audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I will explain it. The, the framework basically takes the uh, business owner through um, uh, six major areas under those three topics that I talked about. And those six major areas are customer impacts cash flow considerations, reorganizing the supply chain, rethinking in the workforce, digital enablement, and redesigning the workplace. So if you think about um, reflecting as to uh, where do we stand today, restarting, what can we kickstart, what can we take advantage of, based on, on what we've been doing up until the crisis, and then revitalization. What are some digital transformation opportunities for us to supercharge parts of our business that didn't exist before? We're finding ways to shorten the life cycles, like I said before, and get these solutions to deliver value in a very quick way. So this workbook takes the key stakeholders of the organization through 10 to 15 questions on each of those six topics. It's very thought provoking and it's available to anyone on Deloitte.com. And uh, I will say to the audience, if you can't find it, send me a, a note on LinkedIn and I will, I will get it to you. Yeah, that's great. And uh, for the audience, that worked perfectly in rehearsal, but you know, you go live and things happen. <laughs> so that's the case. Um, just a, a question back to the audience then. Have you adopted or are you considering adopting a digital service delivery model for your business? You know, Bruce has certainly elaborated quite a bit on that uh, for us here. Um, could be launching a web store or tracking capabilities for your delivery fleet, anything like that. We're just curious in the chat what you've been up to as well. Let's uh, let's talk about best practices for keeping in touch with your customers in this new virtual world. 
So what are your recommendations, Bruce, for our audience on how to maintain and continue to build relationships with customers in this new virtual environment? Can you share some of the best practices and businesses uh, that businesses are using in North America or globally from what you've seen? Yes, and, and, and I'll start by saying, now's the time to show the love to your best customers. <laughs> uh, and if you're not, someone else will be. So, uh, so that would be kind of my guiding principle number one. The second is, um, I, I think this crisis is causing us to be more planful around the way we um, communicate with key individuals. If you consider, you know, normal course of business, we run into each other at Costco or the mall or the gym uh, or the hallways of our organizations. And a lot of things can get done in those conversations. Take that all away. We actually have to be more planful about getting onto each other's calendars with purpose. So big shift in the way we, we uh, plan for our communications and a big shift in connecting the dots. I, I'm, I'm also a big proponent of telling people that it takes eight to 12 interactions with anyone to move the ball. So if you, if you have to plan more and, and, and you have to find ways to get onto people's calendars for those eight to 12 interactions, you better be good at it. Um, I also, I, I think we need, now's the time to be more bold. Uh, the world is looking for bold. P people are looking for peer-to-peer -peer help to get through this. And we have to add healthy doses of empathy and compassion because we're all dealing with things that come along with the, the, the crisis. But now's the time for organizations to take market share by being bold about something because the world is looking for answers about how to get through this in a way that's going to make us thrive. Um, embracing the technology, you know, th th there are 1,012 different platforms out there to do video conferencing, and we've all become experts on many of them just by using them. We need to embrace that more and more because it facilitates these digital transformations. The platforms that we have available today to us are easy to use. Now we just have to pull the trigger. Um, I would say, you know, uh, business voice and connectivity solutions really have to be industrialized. And I think that's where an organization like Rogers is taking the lead on that and helping organizations get to the place that sets them apart. It's really evident right now when you deal with an organization that that has their act together versus the ones who are still fumbling through this. And, and it, that's gonna become more and more and more important. I think the final thing is uh, being totally flexible. Like we, we've seen a lot of examples of manufacturers changing completely what they manufacture uh, based on need. That's, a, that's an yeah. unbelievable shift and I think we're going to see more and more of that. So that agility, the implementation of technologies to help facilitate that, and ingenuity, creativity, whatever you want to call that, is only going to ramp up from here. Yeah, I think that's well said. We certainly saw um, a huge increase in products that we offer that enable that type of, mm -hmm. of um, virtual working, whether it's... Uh, our SIP trunking or Unison products or other things that we provide. And um, it was interesting to your point to see how different businesses really responded differently in the pandemic in terms of how quickly they could adapt and, uh, and what context they were in. We had customers trying to survive, customers who embraced it and rolled into it, customers who took a hit. Uh, but bounce back quickly and other customers who thrive depending upon what their services were, right? So it's um, it's varied. Yeah, you, know, you mentioned, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I, I was just gonna say exactly the same experience that we've had. It's been all over the map 
and um, we want to help all of our customers thrive. And it's it's been um, it's been interesting to see people get out ahead of those curves. You mentioned earlier that um, we're not going back to the way it was; that the future will be different in some way. What what are your thoughts, Deloitte's thoughts on what we're going through today and how it will impact us in the longer run? I think the biggest one, honestly, is many people have figured out how to work remotely. And maybe maybe we're not going to be 100% remote as we were during lockdowns. And maybe we won't be 100% back into our office buildings. I, I think there's going to be a real hybrid and it's going to accelerate the thinking around how to change the work, the workplace and the worker to get done what we need to get done. So that's one. I, I, I don't think this video interaction is going to go away either because I don't I don't know about you, but on a call now, if it's not video, I kind of feel ripped off. <laughs> Somebody's cheating and hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's hiding. And, and, I, and I, I think that's a good thing because personal interaction it, it can't go out of the equation of of being great to our clients. Yeah, we've definitely seen similar things at Rogers where, you know, actually I think productivity went up because in these forums you have to listen better and that uh, <laughs> enables communication and collaboration. And uh, I think in many regards, we've been more productive in this in this mode. But at the same time, there's that human interaction that, Video is great to a point and it's certainly better than just voice, but people miss people too, right? So back to your point about it's probably some balance in the future. I think that resonates with us here as well. Right. We, we, we've already seen um, some uh, personal interactions with our clients starting up already, and it's very encouraging. And um, uh, my view is people, most of our people want to get back to as much human interaction as we can, because that's really how we get how we get things done. But we should be smart about incorporating these things that we figured out during the crisis. Yeah, we absolutely, absolutely agree. So um, we've been watching the questions in the chat, and we have Maddie here moderating our Q and A. So let's uh, let's go to Q and A. So folks, it's your turn to ask Bruce your questions, and let's let's get the expert to answer. Maddie. Hello. Hi, Dennis and Bruce. Thank you so much Hi. for those great insights. I will just say Hi, sorry for that for that slight technical Maddie. difficulty, but we now have it posted um, on the event page in the chat. So great. everyone can access the Deloitte framework there um, and as well as download it from there. So it's actually great that way. So we do have some questions from our customers. So the first one is, there are so many technologies out there to choose from for holding virtual sessions with clients. How do I know what is the right one or the best one to use? Good question. And I, I think I mentioned earlier, I, I, I don't know what the exact count is, but every day I hear about another one. Um, and I, I think I've become an expert on four or five of them because I've helped our own people get ready for sales presentations on many platforms. I, I, you know, from what I've seen, there there are some that are head and tails better than many others. And I don't want to name names today. There, there's lots of reviews out there as the ones that are working, but I would stick to the tried and true um, organizations that have been doing this for a while because they're a little bit ahead. And and I will name one. The, the Zoom platform obviously has done very, very well. And if you were a shareholder in February, you're very happy today if you kept your shares. Um, but you know, came with a, a few challenges around security. I would say more important than picking the best one is picking one and being consistent with it as your face to your client and helping them to understand how to best use the technology. It, it's, um, it kind of flies by us when we get on with a client and assume that that they know what they're doing on the technology. Quite often I, I ask our teams to take a few minutes at the beginning of a session and just go over the technology so that everyone feels comfortable with with how to use it so we don't lose 
any interaction because people are afraid of pressing a button. I hope that answered the question. Awesome. Yeah, no, I agree. And our team's been using MS Teams and it's been very seamless and very smooth. So we've really been enjoying that and been able we, to navigate. We use MS Teams as well as our standard at Deloitte. Yeah, it's been awesome. So we do have another question coming in off the chat. Um, how do you manage unstable internet access from home-based business or work from home environments? Um, maybe uh, maybe Dennis could help. Do you want me to take that one? <laughs> I saw that one. I'm like, that one's coming back to me. Um, you know, it's it's a great question. It's certainly um, uh, an important question these days. You know, the knee jerk reaction is, well, call your provider and, and have them sort it out. But I actually think the answer is probably a little bit more complicated than that. When you start breaking down home networks so often anymore, most of us use Wi Fi and most of us have. Uh, one network in the home. So part of it, and there could be all kinds of devices on, on that Wi-Fi network. So I would say start there and just make sure that your, you know, your devices are current, that uh, the Wi-Fi network is sound, the coverage is good, that, um, you know, somebody isn't streaming Netflix in the other room while you're trying to uh, to conduct a call like this. There are all those things that in your home impact the uh, the service provision. Um, short of that, if it, if you do think it is a service provider problem, certainly in Rogers, we we want you to contact us and we'll get it squared away. Um, and uh, to whatever extent that's required, there's certainly tools out there like speed tests that you can use to uh, to um, to get an idea of what your performance is like versus what you're paying for. And uh, I would do that and bring that information with you if if there's a problem. And um, yeah, it's 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 more important than ever. We actually introduced uh, uh, a new product um, for businesses for that have employees working from home. It's actually a complete business modem lineup. So it's a, an entirely separate network than their residential network to alleviate these types of problems specifically. So that might be a, an option as well. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, it's a it can be a complex problem and. Um, hopefully your service provider, if it's Rogers, uh, if it's Rogers, let me know and we'll look into what's going on and get it fixed for you. But somebody else, then I would take those steps. Great. Thank you, Dennis. So we do have another one in from the chat. We are sure the technology clients and tech interface have picked up and are convenient in adopting this new normal. But how about other businesses, which are soft skill business driven? Any light you guys want to throw on this in terms of sales and their future ahead? Mm -hmm. And, and I'm assuming it's something like uh, professional services, which I'm <laughs> quite familiar with. Um, I, you know, I, I think the uh, the basics of getting back to um, figuring out what's most important to you with regards to where you want to play in the market, the clients that you want to be with, and and understanding your own value proposition hasn't gone away. The, the fundamentals of of outstanding client service, uh, taking care of your clients in the time that they need it most, and not being distracted by the uh, shiny squirrels that fly by the windows that look really attractive at times. Th those are the messages that I'm giving my own organization that nothing has really changed. Our clients have budgets, they have ways of buying things, they have uh, politics, they have organizations to deal with, they have the way people interact with each other. And now's the time, I think, and it's harder, it, it's harder to um, understand how all those things work. Therefore, you have to find ways to get even closer. And, and in some strange way, intimacy and relationship development with your clients has to become number one on the agenda. I think we have to also change our own expectations that sales might come in smaller chunks and they might come over longer periods of time. And what I do know is, is if we're willing to invest in client relationships for life, uh, I think we will all do quite well with that mindset. I think the 
the organizations that are not doing so well are, are the desperate ambulance chasers today. Awesome, thanks for your answer. So we do have a follow-up question actually to the one that you just answered, Dennis, about the internet connection from Diane. And she's saying, is it possible to have more than one provider in a home? Uh, I absolutely no reason not to. I would say when you get to, um, you know, for Rogers products, as I mentioned earlier, you you could have both a residential service and the business service in the same same home. And we have products available now that can do that. Uh, if you wanted multiple providers for redundancy, uh, I've seen some of that going on as well. And there's no reason not to. You just have to pay attention to things like Wi-Fi and make sure the Wi-Fi SSIDs are on different channels so that you don't get conflicts and and things stepping on each other. I did notice you post that uh, speed test was good, but you you were still having issues. Um, if your speed test is good, then that should mean your network connection is good. So another thing you may want to look at is um, the computer you're using. I, I, I don't know what that is, but uh, sometimes software can slow them down or uh, maybe time for a new machine. Um, so I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But uh, sounds like you've got some issues and uh, but it's us, call us, and we'll try to help you. <laughs> Great. So we do have another another question from our customers. Just that we have time for a few more. Um, so I can see how technology helps maintain a relationship with an existing client or someone I have a previous relationship with. But what about engaging a prospect who I've never met? What's the best way to develop this relationship and make it a trustworthy one? Mm -hmm. Very excellent question. And, uh, and I deal with this all day, every day, because... Um, people in my own organization are developing new relationships, even at, at our current clients. The, the, um, the advice that I give our own people is you have to be natural. You have to find ways and innovative and creative ways to connect to the people that you want to connect to. So I'm, I'm not for the cold calling and, and arm waving and trying to grab someone's attention. It's not usually a high on the trust building equation. What I'd rather do is find people who are connected to that people that I'd like to meet and have them be my advocates. So it, um, back to the basics again of, of relationship development, it's, it's always easier for someone to connect you to someone else than for you to try to do it, um, try to do it yourself. So that's number one. The second is I've seen some very innovative ways of trying to connect with people during the pandemic. And some of the best ones that I've seen are things like sending a video of yourself in an email so that when you, you actually can connect with the person, they already know what you look like and how you speak and, and what to expect. It, it's been very, very effective. So I, I would encourage that. Um, and and I, I guess the last is find some things that are very helpful to that person. You know, you, this is a selfless kind of time. So you're not trying to sell anything is what I <laughs> tell all of our people. You're trying to help someone. And put yourself in their shoes and see what exactly would be most helpful to them and send it along. And, you know, after 10 or 15 tries, um, maybe it's time to move on or have someone else develop a relationship with that person. That's great. Thank you both great so much answer. for your answers. Now we are hitting 1.30, so unfortunately we are out of time for questions, but we will do our best to get answers to any other remaining questions and follow up with you. And just a reminder that the framework is now on our page, so you can access it there. And Bruce, thank you so much for joining us. Really, really great having you today. Th thanks, Dennis. Awesome. Thanks, Maddie. Thank you. Both. Thank you, Maddie. Okay. Have Bye. a great day.